Soy Melina Vicario, la biohacker, y estoy hoy en Los Ángeles en la Conferencia Mundial de Biohacking de Upgrade Labs. Tengo el enorme placer de compartir esta entrevista con el doctor Frank Schallenberger, experto en la mitocondria. Nos va a contar todos los secretos para optimizar nuestra mitocondria y mejorar nuestra energía. Dr. Schallenberger, thank you so much for this interview. Ah, it's my pleasure. Thanks. <laughs> so, can you please tell us what is the mitochondria and why is it so important to us? It's the most important thing of all in all of health. It's the most important thing. And uh, it's where we process oxygen. So all that oxygen that we breathe in, it only has one destination and one purpose. And that is it finds its way into our cells. And in our cells, we have thousands of these little bubble structures called mitochondria. And in there, that's where the oxygen ends up, in the mitochondria. And the miracle of the mitochondria is they have the ability to extract the energy from the oxygen. They harness that energy. And that's the energy that you and I use to keep alive and to do all the things we need to do. And the reason mitochondria are so important is because as we get older, as we get sick, as we get toxic, as you know, things happen to us, uh, the mitochondria don't work so efficiently. And what happens is, although we're breathing in the oxygen, we're not getting the energy out, and then we start to fail. Human beings start to fail. Human beings are kind of like flashlights. Yes. Okay, so the flashlight can be perfectly good, but if the battery's no good, it doesn't work. And the mitochondria are our battery, so to speak. Oh. So, um, this is related to many people currently say that they feel that they don't have enough energy or that they have brain fog. This is related to our mitochondria, is this correct? It may be in some times, but not always. Because normally when you and I talk about energy, we're talking about how we feel. We feel energetic, we feel tired. This is not about that so much. This is more about the energy that is the power plant of the cell, that's providing the cell to do its thing. So in a sense, what you just said is correct, because if the mitochondria aren't working well, your brain cells aren't going to work well, things don't work so well. You can't, you're dull, you don't think clearly, you maybe get tired in that way. Okay, and how would you define these mighty organelles? Well, they're, they're tiny little bubbles. And uh, each cell has thousands of them. And two things happen to us as we get older. And as other things happen, you know, maybe if you get an infection or whatever. But two major things happen to us. Number one, the number of the mitochondria decreases over time. Hmm. And number two, the efficiency at which they can extract the energy from the oxygen, that diminishes as well. So less mitochondria, less efficient, all adds up to your cells don't have the energy they need, and things start breaking down ever so gradually. But the older you get, the more things break down, for this reason alone. Do we have mitochondria in our brains, in our yeah. neurons? So, so the cells that require the most energy, like your brain, your kidneys, your heart, yes. those cells, okay, yes. they have the most mitochondria. They maybe have twice as much mitochondria as cells in other parts of your body that don't require as much energy. And how can we know uh, about the quality of our mitochondria? Good question. <laughs> so that's been, my, that's been my, my search for almost 30 years now, is how, how, do, how do we measure that? How do we determine how our mitochondria are working? Because the idea is you and I would like to get to be 70, 80, 90 years old and still have youthful mitochondria. Yes. That's our goal, okay? So the way you measure it, it's really basically incredibly simple. We put a mask on, kind of like a scuba mask, yes. and you're breathing in that device, and it's connected to an analyzer. And what the analyzer is going to do is measure how much oxygen your body is consuming, how much oxygen it's processing, and at the same time, how much carbon dioxide it's putting out. Now, the amount of oxygen you're consuming is going to determine the number of your mitochondria. The more mitochondria you have, the more oxygen you consume. Simple, right? Yes. The amount of carbon dioxide you're putting out is going to tell me how efficiently your mitochondria are working. Because efficient mitochondria produce less carbon dioxide. Mm. So by measuring those two things, I can tell you how many you have 
and how well they're working. That's wonderful. It's simple. And is there a way that people in their homes can know whether they have healthy mitochondria or whether they should start a plan and implementing some biohacks to improve their mitochondria? The best thing is to actually get it measured. So there are doctors that can measure this now. So we're getting measured it, and right here at Upgrade Labs, they are now currently using my device to measure mitochondrial function. So it, the best thing is to get it measured, but there are ways to detail if you have problems. Mm -hmm. One would be if you're intolerant to cold, if you get cold easily, because 60% oh. of all the energy that you make does one thing, and that's keep you warm. So if your mitochondria are not working efficiently, what's going to happen is you're going to be more sensitive to cold. Another one is your weight control. As, as your mitochondria go down, you stop burning as much fat, hmm. and you start gaining more weight. Well, Another one would be, um, you know, if you get breathless. If you, like, go up one or two flights of stairs and you're, you know, you're getting breathless, that's, that's not a good sign. Mm. Intolerance to exercise, that's not a good sign. Hair falling out. It's one of the first things that happens when your mitochondria go bad is your hair might start falling out. Oh, wow. So these are indicators that people can use at home. Many people must be saying, oh, maybe this is happening to me. This it will, will happen to all of us eventually. <laughs> we just want it to happen later. It's going to happen to me, but I don't want it to happen to me till I'm past 100 at least. That is a then, then we can do plan. it. <laughs> So what can we do to improve our mitochondria and to um, make this process that you're telling us that our mitochondria will stop working, to stop it? Yeah, okay. And I will ask you for your best, probably five uh, tips for improving mitochondria okay. that are free and five that are paid. Okay, so first of all, let me just mention, I wrote a book on this and it's called Bursting with Energy. So you can get this book at uh, Amazon or any of the bookstores, and it discusses that. But uh, sort of the number one thing, number one, at the top of the list, stay in really good cardiovascular conditioning, good aerobic conditioning, which for the audience means, you know, to, to uh, establish a regular exercise program where you're doing interval training. You know, you, get, you're, you train so hard for maybe 30 seconds, that's all. But, uh, so that you get breathless and you're very out of breath. That's called aerobic conditioning. That'd be yes. your top number one thing to do. Yes. After that is, uh, you know, making sure that uh, you get enough sleep, that your sleep schedule is normal. You want to go to bed relatively early, you want to get up relatively early, and you want to sleep soundly. If you're not, this will definitely affect your mitochondria. Number three would probably be carbohydrates. For many people, carbohydrates, not for everybody, but for most people, carbohydrates are a problem. Mm -hmm. You eat too many carbohydrates for your system, it suppresses your mitochondrial function, oh. which is why a lot of people do a lot better if they stay away from carbohydrates. The worst carbohydrates, of course, are the sugars and the sweets and all that. So, that, so that's one, way, one thing people can easily do is just kind of start cutting out the sweets. Yes. Mm -hmm. stress, is, stress is not good. Stress also will depress mitochondria. I have stories of people who have been in great shape, the mitochondrial test really fantastic, and they get very, very stressed, and even for only two weeks, and it'll shut down their mitochondria almost 50%, oh. just from stress alone. Wow. So these are some of your major factors from a medical standpoint, yes. and things that you can do to, to improve your, your mitochondrial function, at the, probably at the top of the, hip, uh, the top of the heap is hormones. Hormones. So as you and I get older, we get to a point where our body doesn't make enough hormones. The number one hormone in this regard is thyroid. It's very, very important. Yes. And if you're not getting enough thyroid hormone, that's a big reason for decreased mitochondrial function. And it happens to almost everybody over the age of 50. Mm -hmm. And the thing I'd like, I'd like the audience to know is that the thyroid blood tests that they teach us in medical school to diagnose this, Yes. They're inaccurate. They're no good oh. for this particular purpose. These blood tests are good to, to determine who has a thyroid disease, but they're not good. They're not reliable or sensitive enough to determine 
who, who's, they don't have a thyroid disease, but the thyroid isn't functioning adequately and their mitochondrial function is dropping. So thyroid hormone is very important. All the other hormones are important too, but thyroid's number one in that. Thank you so much. Is there any other tip that you would like to give our audience before we reach the end of this wonderful interview? <laughs> yes, thanks. Uh, yes, I, I think the major thing is to uh, get your mitochondrial function tested. Get it tested, see where you're at. Because you could have, seriously, you can have really bad mitochondrial function and feel just fine. Mm, so it can sneak up on you, just like blood pressure or blood sugar problems. Unless you measure it, you might not realize that it's not very good. So get it measured. Get it measured. Come to Upgrade and get it measured. <laughs> At Upgrade Labs. And Dr. Schallenberger, where can people know more about you and everything you're teaching us? Well, thanks. Um, one, one thing is you can go to YouTube. I post a lot of stuff on YouTube. Talk about a lot of different topics, mitochondria and other topics. So just plug in my name. I have a whole channel on there and I've got a bunch of videos up. You can do that. You can go to my website, which is easy to remember. It's antiagingmedicine.com. And we've got a lot of information there about uh, the clinic and what we're doing and things like that. Wonderful. Thank you so much for this interview. It's yeah. such a huge pleasure. My pleasure. My pleasure.